Amen. That in Jesus' his name. Praying for a breakthrough. A breakthrough today. Yes. That it would happen today. No, um, amen, in Jesus' name. Brian Courtney Wilson said admittedly, he get anxious sometimes. He said admittedly that he gets anxious sometimes. Sometimes it seems like I'm flying by the seat of my pants and I'm just rushing and, and going and that I too get anxious sometimes. And I told my wife yesterday morning, I'm monitoring my blood pressure yesterday morning, I got up and I checked it and it was uh, low. It was, you know, where it needed to be, about 116 over 74, something like that. And this morning I was sending my dad the invite, my dad the invite for the Zoom service. And I realized that in my draft box of my email, I never sent my email to Brother Wesley and that the invitation wasn't back into my regular email. So I rushed and sent it and I checked my blood pressure and then it was then 146 over like 80 something. I'm like, what's going on? And so we can get anxious and sometimes, but Brian Courtney Wilson says that we can be still in God's presence and not get anxious. And so my goal and my intent today is to Stand still without rushing, and I pray that God will give me clarity and that God will um, cause my thoughts to align. My brain many times goes faster than my mouth, uh, and, and, and you know, sometimes I might have to come back to a point. But what uh, we're talking about today is called family matters. Family matters. And so we began the month, and even uh, uh, Pastor Rose had sermons before uh, 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 as we started um, um, orienting us to the mental health and uh, crisis. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so we received messages on mental health um, issues. And then um, last week we kicked off, and it was Mother's Day. Bless the Lord. Uh, we already said we just honor our mothers and thank God for, for our mothers and bless the Lord. Mother's Day, and we kicked off our family series that lasts until Father's Day. And so I, I don't know if you thought or, or, or the scripture that was read maybe seemed, what does this have to do with family matters? And so what my intent is, is to couple something that God has been birthing in my spirit um, um, earlier on that brings mental health awareness and mental health issues with the family. Family matters. And so Jesus, just to recap, and, and, and you know, sometimes we seem redundant, and as the pastor said earlier, you know, if you heard him say that before, sometimes we seem to redundant, but marketing and even, even the world's perspective and the worldly perspective from the 30s, marketing has a rule that's called the rule of seven. And in the rule of seven, Quentin, if you want somebody and you're a businessman and you want someone to notice your product, it says that it has to be mentioned at least seven times before the customers start to go towards your product and, and, and recognize your brand. You have to say it at least seven times. And so if you hear us say it, continuously saying something and repeatedly, continually saying something seven times, hey, we want to get it into your spirit, but it's called the rule of seven. So Ju Jesus wants us to live normal, fulfilling lives. We heard that mental health is possible. We heard that the struggle is real. It was listed that the importance of the church 
is the role that the church has in the business and with the business of mental health. The family series was, was kicked off. And so Family Matters, we hope that this is a contribution, my contribution to both the family and its role of supporting mental health growth. You know why family matters? Because family matters to God. And if family matters to God, then family should be, should be important and should matter to us. Amen? And the family, that institution, that group, that bond, that community, has a crucial role as it relates to mental health. The Ad Council, and this is a 2020 um, 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 da data, the Ad Council says that one out of five people will experience consistent loneliness. Loneliness and mental health issues, they say, often go hand and hand. And adults with mental health issues are more than twice as likely to experience loneliness. The Signal Group says that even before 2019, even before COVID-19, that there is, and there, there, they call it an epidemic of loneliness. Research also shows that people with satisfying relationships, people with friends, people with family, people with community are happier and have fewer health problems. They have better cognitive function and they have less depression and they live longer. Family matters. God in his infinite knowledge put family together. In Genesis 2.18, after all that God had done at creation and, and he said this is good and it is good, and it is good, and after this day it is good, and after this day it is good, and it came, and the, 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 the detailed portion of creation from Genesis 2.18, it says that he came to man and he said that it is not good. What is not good? That man should be alone. That man should be lonely. He said, I will make a helper. I will make a helpmate for him. He saw that Adam needed something to, 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 to complete him, if you will. And God has given me, bless the Lord for my wife, God has given me a gift to, to, to complete and strengthen and be with me and go alongside with, of me. But God had made Eve because he said it wasn't good for Adam to be by himself, to be alone. So he placed him in community. He made them into community. And in Psalm 68, verse 6, God said that he has set the who? He has set, it says, God has set the lonely in families. Place those who are lonely in families. Family in strong concordance came up 162 times, and families plural came up 125 times. And there are two Hebrew words for, for family, and one is called Bayeth. And in Bayeth, the thought behind Bayeth is a house, a home, where you're making a home is the nuclear family, where you have the father, the mother, and the children, and that's the nuclear family, and that's the thought behind Bayeth. But there is another Hebrew word that's called Mispaha, and it's the extended family. And in the Mispaha, you have, you have your family, and it can include your in-laws, and it can include your servants, and it can include the animals, and it's more likened to a tribe, a family, a community, those who, who, who have of, of faith, that are of the same faith. So when we talk 
about family today, we're not, even, we're not just talking about the nuclear family, but we're extending it because when loneliness comes in, there's more than just social loneliness. There's emotional loneliness. There's what they call as, as exten, existential loneliness or situational loneliness. And God has provided the cure for each type of loneliness. So Sister Nicole read 1 Kings 19, 1 through 18, and I'm not going to reread every verse that we just touch and highlight on some of the verses, but if you know and if you remember the story of Elijah, greatest prophet there is, Elijah. Elijah and Moses, the greatest leader, and we talked Elijah and Moses at the transfiguration with Jesus. But Elijah, Elijah, we don't know much about Elijah's um, Baed family. In Chronicles, it does mention Jehoram Jer 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 as Elijah's father, but other than that, we don't know much about Elijah's close-knit family. But Elijah comes on to the scene in Kings, in 1 Kings 17, and James says that Elijah prayed and that it would not rain for three and a half years. And the reason for the famine is because Israel had turned their backs on God, and that was part of the consequences that come from turning their back as an agrarian society. No rain, and the crops can't grow, and God says, I'm going to hold up and stop the rain. And so Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years, and it didn't rain. And during that time, in chapter 17, shows God as a provider. And while Israel was suffering, while the northern kingdom was suffering without rain and without water and was having a hard time, God had provided a raven to provide food for Elijah. God is a provider. Chapter 18 talks about he's the only True God. Chapter 19 talks about the intimacy and the, and, and the way that God speaks even in a whisper. And so Elijah comes on to the scene, and Ahab, he has a wife named Jezebel, and Jezebel is a rough lady, and Jezebel is a hard lady, and Jezebel is uh, one who is obstinate and, and, and against God, and so she's against God's people, and she kills God's people, and they're looking for Elijah, and Elijah shows himself in chapter 18 after many days, and what ensues after Elijah shows himself, uh, Quentin and Dorian, uh, a competition comes on, and Elijah says, you know what we'll do? Let's see who the true God is. If you guys are believing Baal is the God, and I'm saying that God, Yahweh, is the God, let's go up to Mount Carmel and have a competition. And they go up to Mount Carmel, and Elijah tells them, hey, you know what, let's do this. You pray and call on your God. And then when it was Elijah's turn, he said, just douse the altar with water, and the God that answers by fire is God. And, and after they doused it with water and soaked it, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, you know, I'm your prophet. You gave me this word. Show them that you are God and that I'm doing this because you told me to do it. And the scripture said that fire dropped from heaven and burned up all the, consumed all the altar and the wood and everything. And after Elijah had that great victory, he comes to chapter 19 and Jezebel says, you know what, Elijah? By tomorrow, you're going to be a dead man. And Elijah hits the road. Elijah hits the road? You just beat 400, by God's grace, you just beat 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah, 850 prophets you put in a grave because of God, and now one woman says, by tomorrow, you're going to be dead and you are running? And verse 4 says, 
that Elijah prayed that he might die. He said, it's enough. You know what that is? That's mental challenge. He said, God, I want to die. And sometimes exhaustion can put you in a state. See, that, that's, that's suicidal ideation is what they call that. He says he, want, he wants to die. They call that suicidal ideation. And not only, James says, James says that Elijah was a like man. He was a man of like passion like we are. And we look at Elijah and we see all these great things. And Elijah, he, 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 we see all these things and miracles that he wrought and all the things that he could call down fire from heaven and all these things that he could do. Yet he was like we are. And we come in the times when we're exhausted and we're tired. And one battle right after the next. We just finished one battle and he goes into another battle and he's tired. And not only, but watch what God does. Not only is Elijah facing this, what they call suicidal ideation, but Moses, the great leader Moses in Numbers 11, you know what he said? He said, God, I'm tired of these people complaining. They're wearing me down. I'm tired, Lord. He said, just, just, just kill me. Just take my life. Elijah and Moses and Jonah and Jeremiah. But watch God. Watch what God does. In, in, in Moses' case, God didn't even speak to that. Moses, God spoke to the root cause. He said, bring 70 elders. If you're exhausted and if you're tired, bring 70 elders and we're going to put some of your spirit on them and they're going to help you. And they're going to help you. You, tell, you answer the hard stuff and they answer some stuff and, and spread out the work. And watch what he does with Elijah. He sends an angel and the angel says, he wakes him up and the angel says, look, reminiscent of, of 17, when he went to Zarephath, and, 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 and he went to a, 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 a pagan territory because Israel had rejected God and was accepting Baal. God sends Elijah to a territory where Jezebel's dad rules and Baal is the prominent religion First calls religion there. God sends Elijah to Zarephath and the woman speaks of faith and speaks of God. And Israel can't even do it. And so the angel brings cake and water in verse 4 and he eats and he falls back asleep and he comes back and he wakes him up again and said, do it. And I've looked at these, this passage before and I said, yes, when you're exhausted, you know what you need? You need rest and you need food. You need rest and you need food. And he said, Elijah, and that's true. You need to rest your body and you need to eat right. And it says, Elijah got up and from the nutrients and from the rest, he went 40 days to Mount Horeb on, the, on those meals. And as I was looking at this, I thought, wow, it's a miracle that he was able to go 40 days on that rest. But I've read and I found out that it shouldn't have taken him 40 days. It only should have taken him 20. And because of our mental disposition, because of our mental outlook on life, sometimes when we're going and going to the place where God has destined for us, it's taken us twice as long because our perspective is wrong. And so Elijah is walking to Mount Horeb and it takes him 40 days. When we could be where God wants us to be in half the time, sometimes it's taken us twice as long. And verse 9 says that Elijah goes into a cave. And God's word came to him, and he asked him, he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing in this place, Elijah? And he says that, God, I've been very zealous, I've been energetic, I've been aggressive, and I've been, I've, I've, 
God, you're my God. My name means you are the Lord, that you're my God. So God, you're my God, and I've been very zealous for you. And the Israel, Israel has forsaken your covenant. They, they, they don't worship you. They've killed your prophets and, and, and with the sword. And here's where I didn't. I realized that the food and the rest leans to um, um, strength and, and helps you along with your mental clarity. Rest is important. The scripture said that I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, you alone, O oh Lord, make me to dwell in safety. Rest is important. But I didn't realize until, until this kept coming in my spirit, he says that I am alone. He says, God, I'm alone. I'm by myself. There's no one else with me. Not only did he say it one time in verse 10, but after the phenomena, after the thundering and after the lightning and after the earthquake and after the pump and all that went along and he was looking for God and he didn't hear him, and a still small voice and God in his intimacy and God in his closeness, he speaks to Elijah and he asks him again, he says, Elijah, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Why are you, why are we, why are we in a cave? But God is a God who provides and he calls us out of our caves of despair. He calls us out of our caves of darkness and he wants to know what we're doing here if he is our God. He says, Elijah, I'm your God. What are you doing in this situation? What are you doing? And he didn't berate Elijah. He wanted Elijah to see that he was his God and that he would never be alone. You know, family, family matters. Talking about family, we're talking about community. I don't know, uh, before COVID-19 and, and we would always have family reunions. I don't know if everybody has family reunions. And so now, uh, maybe a, uh, um, um, a step towards normalcy. Uh, our, our family, the Ams family is having a family reunion in June and it's been since COVID and, 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 and shows that I was, I was brought up looking at in the 70s, if you notice the title, 70s and 80s, Family Matters. And I just know, family matters. Not only does family matter in importance and significance, but family have matters, items that families deal with. And some of the shows that I watched, I don't know, they had all in the family. They had Archie Bunker and Edith Bunker. They had all in the family. And, you know, Archie was you know, kind of kind of out there. and But you know what they dealt with? They dealt with issues. All in the family was based on, and our UK family's on, and all in the family was based on a, U, a British sitcom called Until Death Us Do Part. And so we had All in the Family here in America, and a spinoff from All in the Family was a show called Maud, and then, at, then a spinoff from Maud was a show that was based in Chicago, apartment 17C, and it was good time. It was a family. We talked about families and good times and JJ, kid, Dino, Mide, and, 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 and good times. And they had hard times, but as a family and that with togetherness, they were able to make it through. And family matters and Carl Winslow and Laura and Steve Urkel. And they were a family and they had difficult times and they had times uh, 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 racism and, and Archie Bunker and all in the family dealt with anti-Semitism and all these things. But as a family and as a group, they were able to make it through. And God says that family matters and family is important. And he tells Elijah, he says, I want you to go. To, so Elijah, watch God. So Elijah can see that he's not alone. 
he wants him, he says, I want you to go back the way you came to and go to Damascus. And what I want you to do is I want you to anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. I want you to anoint, and he says, Haziel as king over Syria. And I want you to anoint Elisha as the son, uh, the son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola. You shall announce him as prophet in your place. Well, once I heard that, I would have been like, well, so I'm prophet, and now you're telling me to anoint Elisha as prophet in my place. Where, where am I going? But he didn't say that, but God is wanting him to see that you're not alone. You have a family. Peter says, Peter says in our, in our suffering, don't think that we're suffering alone. He says that you have brethren all over the world that are going through these things. You have brethren, you have a fraternity, you have brothers, you have a family, you have people of like faith, you have community. You're not in it alone. And not only are you going to anoint Elisha, he says, but Elisha, I have 7,000. I have 7,000. I have a community of believers. Paul, Paul says it's a remnant in Romans 11 and 4 and 5. He says it's a remnant. He says, and, and as he was asking Elijah these questions, Paul called it the divine response. And he says, God's response, God who, who, who's divine, the divine response, God responds and says, listen, I have 7,000 of those who have not bowed down to Baal and who've not kissed him. I have 7,000 who have not worshipped him. He says, Elijah, you are not, you're not alone. God is a provider, not, God is not only a provider with, 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 with the physical and the food and the water and the cakes over hot coals, but God has made a way with family coming together that we can make it through mental issues, that we can break out of loneliness, and not only loneliness in a social stance, but when you're going through a situation and we feel that we're in there by ourselves, God says you're not alone. When you feel alone and isolated, and I felt alone before, I felt that nobody could help me, and God says you're not alone. And it was his mispah, his community of Believers. So what do we do? What's a challenge? What's our challenge? You know, there is a counselor. Maybe I'm not getting her title right. But it's a lady in Charlotte named Kobe Campbell. And she has a book, Why Am I Like This? Brilliant lady. She's right there in Charlotte. And it probably would be hard to set up an appointment with her. And our, our pastor, he talked about if, if you have, if you're having physical issues, you know what we do? We go to our family practitioner and or maybe you need to see the cardiologist and you go and then the stigma of anything associated with, 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 with our mindfulness, our, our well-being, our mental well-being, we, we don't want to go. But Kobe Campbell, she talks, how, she talks about her life and why am I like this? And situational uh, 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 loneliness and, and, and as it relates to trauma and she talks about these things and what is our takeaway as part of a community and part of, of, of a family dynamic what is our part that we play as, as we see someone or we ourselves are expressing loneliness we, we, we reach out 
We reach out. We, 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 we ask God for hearts of compassion like his and eyes to see and hands to move that we can reach out and help strengthen our brethren. You know, um, Kobe Campbell says before she, um, um, she was a Christian and kind of slipped away, and before she totally surrendered her life, she had gotten to a point where she wanted to commit suicide, and she drank um, some vodka and had taken, I believe it was Percocet, taken some pills, and she said, this is it. She had written a note to her twin sister and says, you know, I'm leaving. This is it. I know you're going to be upset with me. And she wrote, wrote, wrote a note to her roommate. She drank her vodka and took her pills. And as she lay down, she said her phone rang. She picked up the phone. She knew she had cut the phone off. She picked up the phone and she said hello. And it was a friend that had been trying to get her to go, get her to, go to church with him. And he said... See, when we're used, when we, when we open ourselves up to be used as vessels of God and we just lay it all out there, God will do things with us, miraculous things. The friend said, the friend said, Kobe, I know you just, God told me I know that you drank a bottle of vodka and you took some pills and you want to die and you want to go to sleep. She, he said, but God says, don't go to sleep. And she said she put her phone on mute again and don't know what happened. And she laid it down and zoop, 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 and just picked it up. She said, I know I put this phone on. She, she answered the phone. Hello. And he says, God said, don't go to sleep. And now this lady is helping, helping people with mental health issues, helping people to overcome them. God has a purpose for our lives. God has a purpose for the family dynamic. God has a purpose for you. So what do we do? We open up ourselves to be used by God. We, we become observant. We ask God for his eyes. Listen to, listen to this right here. This is about just something that, a story that we can relate to um, being aware of people in need and people um, 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 struggling. It says, at the World Championships in Budapest in June, USA's Anita Alvarez sank to the bottom of the pool. Looking across the deck, looking across the deck, this is, there we go. Looking across the deck, then noticing she was underway too long, her coach, Andrea Fuentes, immediately dove in after her, fully clothed, pulling her to safety. Anita was unconscious and didn't have the capacity to kick, paddle, or help herself in any way. If Andrea would not have noticed, she would have drowned. But she knew Anita. She looked for her quickly noticed she was under too long and dove in without thinking twice. The writer of this uh, text says, this has resonated with me and the article. He says, this has res resonated with him. When we see someone under too long, if we see someone struggling, don't think twice. Dive in fully to safety, the surface, because they've lost their strength to swim. It says, can someone count on you to be that person that would go looking and notice when they're under too long? Diving in to support them when they're all out of fight and fuel them to swim in these turbulent waters called life? Are we that type of family member? Are we that type of community member that looks? that asks God for his heart and asks God for his eyes and his hands and to go and jump in. That's what God is looking for. God says that he's concerned and he cares and he says that we're not alone. We may think we're alone, but Jesus, our brother, the scripture says that Jesus, that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And Jesus, our brother, says we're not alone. 
He says he wasn't alone. He says the Father is with me and I'm not alone. And he says that you're not alone. God says that I will never forsake you, never will I leave you. He says that we are not alone. Even if your father or your mother forsake you, God says that he won't. You're not alone. God is with you. And all that we have, the challenges and the struggles that we have to face, He's with us. And we pray peace. We pray grace. And we pray mercy into your heart and mine. We are not alone. And I thank God for you as my as a group, a community, a family, a family of believers. In Jesus' name.